Prince George undertook his first royal crawl about the day as he attended a parent and baby group with his own, world-famous, mummy and daddy. The eight-month-old was brought along by his clearly proud parents, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, to the playdate organised by the Royal New Zealand Plunkett Society at Government House in Wellington. Following his scene-stealing appearance on Monday when the family arrived in New Zealand to begin their three-week tour down under, all eyes were on the future king as he was introduced to ten babies born within a few weeks of his own birthday, on July 22 last year. It was the first time that the third in line to the throne had undertaken the public duty, of sorts. But it clearly won't be the first, in what will be a lifetime of royal service. Fortunately George, whose first two bottom teeth recently popped through, conducted his debut public engagement with the confidence of a seasoned pro. Crawling around on the plush blue patterned carpet of the Blander Room, which was littered with toys including building bricks and a xylophone, George was one of the biggest babies there, quite a bruiser one onlooker remarked. Dressed in blue Rachel Riley dungaree shorts with a ship on the front, a white blouse and soft blue pre-walking shoes, he had no fear in pulling himself up towards the other children, and stealing their toys. Kate looked her usually elegant self in a black and white print Tory Burt dress with a fringe detail at the sleeves and hem. She watched on protectively, occasionally wiping some dribble from his chin, as William chatted to some of the other parents. It's madness, there are babies everywhere. He exclaimed. At one point the Duchess pulled her son to his feet and helped him bounce up and down, showing that the prince probably isn't far off cruising yet. Kate, with George still in her arms, talked to Ingrid, 29, and David, 28, Alf with baby Eden. George was getting restless, kicking his legs against his mum, so she put him down on the floor to allow him to crawl. The little prince set off at quite a pace, across the NZ fern patterned carpet of the Blundell room. He was stopped in his tracks by baby Amelia Howe who grabbed a plastic block from him. Baby Amelia started yelling at this royal encounter as her mother, Stephanie Van Heuven, apologized to Kate for the bawling, but George crawled serenely on. He then got hold of a blue plastic block which he put in his mouth. Baby Sophie Bainbridge crawled past Kate completely oblivious to the royal visitor. Kate said hello but Sophie ignored her and kept in crawling. George then picked up a purple tambourine and started shaking it gurgling with delight at the noise. Baby Eden, dressed in floral dress and headband, got in George's way and he reached out to stroke her face. Then he reached out a little bit too far and hit Eden in the face with a flailing arm. She lost her headband in the melee but seemed unperturbed. Kate then picked up George. Dad Ryan Tunstall said, Isabella and George had a lot of fun on the drums. It was a pleasure sharing our beautiful baby with the Duke and Duchess. The whole thing was a wonderful highlight. Grant Collins, 38, and Magda Gerberts, 35 met the royals with baby Lucas. Grant said, we found out Lucas had more teeth than George so he's winning that race. George has got about four or five teeth coming through. Lucas has got his seventh coming on. We chatted to the Duke first and asked about how they and George coped with the jet lag. William said sleeping and distracting, the baby, was the best thing to get over jet lag and that's what they'd done with George. We spoke to the Duchess about group play. George had never played with so many babies before. She said it was the most amount of babies they'd ever had in a room with George. He does see other babies, but not many in a group like this. George is bubbly, quite feisty and he took control. He crawled to the center of the room and he owned the place. He honed in on certain toys and took the ones that he wanted, no one was going to stand in his way. Gay parents Jared Mullen and Ryan McRae, who have baby Isabella, spoke about their experience afterwards. Mr. Mullen said, Isabella and George had a little play together. They were chums. In a way all we did was talk about babies. The Duke and Duchess were lovely.
they were both very relaxed and we chatted about our experiences as first-time parents. He, George, is a lovely little boy, very intrepid. The whole thing has been a huge privilege. It was lovely to meet the Duke and Duchess and share our beautiful children with them. They are both very lovely and loving parents. George liked the drum and the standing up play station. At the end of the day it comes back to the fact that we are first time parents. Mr. McRae added, it was such a big day. Grant Collins added, the Duchess said George was sleeping well through the night and that he's on solid food now so that has really helped his sleeping. Sheila and Sony Lima met the Royals with baby TJ, Daji Lima. Sheila, who works in childcare, looked lovely, and very patriotic, in a traditional blue Samoan dress, with white flowers and red necklace. She said, it was a very special time. We had a chance to cuddle George. He is very strong and very advanced. We talk to the Duke and Duchess about parenting, and to the Duchess about her role as both a mother and a royal. She said she was lucky to have help with George from her family and her friends. She is very down to earth and charming, they both are. Prince William said he supported his wife by giving George his bottle at night and putting him to bed. I was very nervous because this was my first time experience meeting royalty. I feel very special. Different children develop differently but George is very advanced for his age. He was crawling and wanting to walk in an advanced way, more so than my son who is younger than him. George is almost trying to walk, he can pull himself up and he is almost there. He will be crawling soon. All of the babies present were from local families and chosen by the organization, which provides health care and support to new families, known in New Zealand simply as Plunkett. The idea was to give the William and Kate the opportunity to introduce George to the world in a less formal way than usual and give the couple a chance to swap anecdotes about the trials and tribulations of being first-time parents. Kate Bainbridge, 29 a tax accountant whose daughter Sophie was born on July 11th said in advance of the meeting, I've had a few jealous looks from other parents when they found out we were meeting the Duke and Duchess. Even though we come from a very different background we have got a lot in common with the Duke and Duchess because we've been through the sleepless nights and we can talk to them about our experiences. We are all first-time parents, like them, so it should be quite easy to chat to them. Philip Gray, 40, who was due to meet the couple, with his wife Olana, 31, and daughter Lily, born on July 16 said, the good thing about kids is they're unpredictable so I'm sure there will be a lot of laughter. Babies are a great icebreaker. Also meeting the royal visitors will be gay fathers Jared Mullen and Ryan McRae and their daughter Isabella. Jared, from Oregon, us, and Ryan, from Australia were chosen to represent the growing numbers of same-sex couples in New Zealand who use Plunkett's parental support services. Tristian Clark, New Zealand president of Plunkett, said, The parents are a spread of all the communities in New Zealand, including Maoris, Samoans, people of Chinese descent and gay couples. This is a very multicultural country and we wanted the Duke and Duchess to meet people from all backgrounds. Mrs. Clark said the Duke and Duchess did not specifically ask to meet a gay couple, leaving the choice of parents entirely down to Plunkett. Tina Sim, Plunkett's area manager for Wellington, was the woman tasked with choosing the ten sets of parents. She said she started by looking for local couples whose children were born around the same time as Prince George, looked for parents from diverse backgrounds, including a single mother and tried to get an even split of girls and boys. The first ten people who I called and who picked up the phone are the ones who will be attending, she said. There are some couples who I called and who have missed out because they didn't answer. Mr. Gray said he will be the third generation of his family to meet the royal visitor. His grandfather Bob Graham met the Queen when he was serving in the Royal New Zealand Air Force and his father Robert Gray met the Prince of Wales. Now I'm meeting the next two generations down, 
and maybe our daughter will meet Prince George's children one day, said Mr. Gray, an accountant. His wife Olana, who works in marketing, said, We followed the Duchess's pregnancy and birth because it was happening at the same that I was pregnant. It's a nice link to the UK. The Royal New Zealand Plunkett Society, known to all as Plunkett, was founded in 1907 by pediatrician Sir Frederick Truby King. He wanted to help babies and mothers dying of malnutrition and disease, and in 1908 the influential Victoria Plunkett, wife of the then Governor-General, became its patron, giving the organization her name. Today Plunkett, a non-profit organization, helps more than 90% of all babies born in New Zealand, with free childcare advice home visits and other services. Its mission is to ensure that New Zealand children are among the healthiest in the world. Earlier this week it caused controversy by fitting a forward-facing car seat for eight-month-old Prince George in the Cambridge's official car, despite telling parents all children under the age of two should be in rear-facing seats. The Duke and Duchess enjoyed a day of rest and recuperation with George yesterday after arriving in Wellington on Monday. The couple were welcomed with a traditional ceremony on the lawns of Government House where they were greeted by the New Zealand Governor-General Lieutenant General the Right Honourable Sir Jerry Mate Pap, his wife Lady Janine and Mary Elders.